Well, hello, Internet. Today's tutorial is brought to you because I received a question from Death by Kazillion, and he asked specifically for more Illustrator tutorials. So what I'm going to do for you today is show you how to do a very common thing in Illustrator, and along the way, you're going to learn how to do a lot of additional things in Illustrator. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the quick and dirty way to change a JPEG that's all sloppy and nasty looking into a nice EPS file. Whenever you place your object inside being this nasty JPEG, you do do that by clicking File and then clicking Place and finding your graphic and then clicking on Place. I already did that though. Uh, you may, before you can proceed to the next step, have to rasterize this image. How you do that, don't worry about what it means. Just if you try to go to Trace and Paint and you do not see Make as an option, yes, you're going to have to rasterize it. So click on Rasterize, click OK. OK, now you're going to be able to go into Object and Live Trace and then click on Tracing Options. Now what we're going to do is convert this guy down so the whole entire thing is basically one color. So what we're going to do here is choose Black and White, click on Preview, and you can see down here it's already started to make some changes. Well, you can play around with the threshold area on the screen and it's going to automatically help you pick out the image that you have in here that you want to recreate. Whenever you get to it to a point in which you like it, if you want to cut out all the white in the, in the background, click on Ignore White, and then click on Trace. What it did was it converted everything, but we're going to have to zoom out here again. Go into Object, go down to Live Paint, and then click on Make. Click OK. All right, now we're going to be able to edit this guy. We want to delete this, this binding box that goes around it. What we're going to have to do is come up here and click on the Direct Selection tool. Come in here, and we're going to want to delete that surrounding box like I did right there. The client wants all of these buildings. Basically, the client wants it to look like this. So what we're going to have to do is come in here and delete all these individual elements that we're going to come in and clean up for the client. So I'm just using, again, this Selection tool, coming in here and deleting away all the parts we don't want. And then we can zoom in here. Take a look at this guy. We're also going to want to retype in this text here. So I'm going to delete this out of here. It looked even sloppier in the JPEG, so this will look nice and sharp. This guy right here, we're not going to be able to delete it without deleting everything. So let's just drag it down. You could, of course, also come in here to this pen tool and click on the Delete Anchor Point tool and delete the anchor points based off of that. And it's going to shape up everything real nice for you. Additionally, we want to come in here and click on this. And you can see I'm just deleting all these points, all these stray points. And anything that touches like we have here, we're not going to want to play with that. We want to use the pen tool that will delete the paths for us. Again, click on that. And delete all those stray points, but it's not going to mess anything else up. Do the same thing down here with a stray eye. And then, if you look in here, you can see there's a little, a little blip right here. Well, if we zoom in even further, use the magnifying lens. Real quickly, you can change the arrow tool by holding down the command or control key, depending on if you have Windows or a Mac. Then come up here to the convert anchor tool. And if I click on these individual points, it's going to flatten them. It's going to take the arc out of them. Now, if you wanted to put the arc back in, all you have to do is click on it with that same exact tool. And you can see here that I'm able to edit those points. I'm going to hit Control Z to make it go back to the way that it was because I don't want it to be like that. Go back to my selection tool and delete out the rest of the little pieces that I don't want. Okay, everything's all nice and cleaned up now. Let's go back in here and put health back in here. How exactly do you do that? Go back to your pen tool. Now if we wanted to select everything on here and lock this guy down so we could draw on top of it, get our angles right, just select everything, hit Object, come up to Lock, Lock Selection. Come in here with the pen tool. What we're going to do is we're going to copy the arc that we have right there. Now we can come over to this Type tool. Click and hold down on the left button. Come to Type on Path tool. And we're going to type on the path. Type in Health. A little bit big. Now everything's shaping up and everything lines up. I'm going to come in here and do the same thing with Chiropractor. Go back to your Pen tool. Click here. Back over to the Text tool. Click on that path. Select it, increase the number of points in the font, boom, just did a whole bunch of things there. Okay, we want to come in here and clean this up. Come in here, delete some points. Real nice and easy to do. Got everything all cleaned up, drag Chiropractor over. 
All right, now we want to get the building in here. How do you do that? With the gradient tool. I've already messed up my image, so I'm going to go in here and click on File, Place, jump over here, grab this guy, bring him in, Object, Lock Selection, and I want to re redraw these buildings right here. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go over here again to my pen tool, and if I zoom in, I'll be able to select and redraw these buildings. Now, if I want the line to be straight, I hold down Shift key while I'm doing this. And you can see how nice and easy everything falls right in place. Now you're just going to have to trust that I drew all these buildings. Okay, so I got the buildings all drawn in here. So I want to add the gradient effect like you can see right here in the logo above. So I just click on this, jump over here on the right, click on gradient, and you can see that everything is gradient from left to right. I want to change that. By the way, if you would want to change the gradient, you could put a nub there just by clicking on this line, and then you could increase, like let's say we went to black, highlight in the center, what have you. I'm going to hit Control Z and get rid of that. I'm going to grab this little nub, just drag it off of there. It leads right for you. Then I'm going to come over here to the gradient tool, change the angle of the gradient so it's going from top to bottom. So, got this guy all set up. What I'm going to do now is hit Control C. I'm going to copy it, and then a Control F to paste another version of it in the front. Why am I doing that? You can see there's a stroke here on the top. There's no stroke across the bottom, so I want to emulate that. So I'm going to come in here. First, come over here to the left side and click on No to eliminate that gradient, but then I want to click on the stroke itself on the left side. Double clicked on it, brought up this page. I'm going to choose a darker gray. Dark gray, click OK. Boom, the stroke's on there already. Problem is, I have a stroke down here as well. Just a quick tip, if you want to get rid of your highlights, I'm going to hit Control H or Command H, and that's going to make, I'm just still selecting it, but it's not showing the paths. So I want to get rid of this guy down here. How do I do that? Come over here where you see the eraser tool, and I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go to the knife tool. I'm going to hold down Command or Control to bring up my little selection tool. I'm going to select that item, and I'm just going to cut it open with a knife. And this time, I'm going to do the individual direct selection tool. Click, delete, click, delete, click, delete. And now I got my buildings all done exactly the way that I want them. I got all of the strokes where they're supposed to be. I got the gradient where it's supposed to be and everything. So I select that. I'm going to drag it over here. The client decided they wanted it set up this way, so I left it the way that it is. Now the only thing we got to do is change this from black to a dark gray. So I'm going to select this guy. Come over here. Click on Edit, Edit Colors, click on Adjust Color Balance, Preview, Convert, and I'm going to change this to a light gray instead of dark black. Click OK. You can see now it's a light gray instead of that dark black. Now I'm going to create the text down here. I'm going to come over here, click on the Type tool, click. Now if I select this text, I can enlarge it by using this box right here and just drag it. Or I can come in here, select this text with my text tool, and I'm going to increase the font. That's just about right. Now if I select everything, I can change the orientation of the text. I'm going to center it in this case. And now I have my text in the right position. But as you can see on this previous uh, version that I created up here, it's real easy to see the text. Down here, it, it's running in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in, select this text, move it around a little bit. Then we're going to create an outline behind here. So I want to copy that, and then I want to paste it back by hitting either Command or Control B. Then I want to add a stroke to it with the color white. And I did that by just clicking over here and clicking on white. Then I'm going to click on this stroke tool over here, and I'm going to increase the stroke. So that's a real quick and dirty and easy and nice way to create a JPEG into an EPS file that looks pretty doggone nice and is going to print really, really nice. And if you don't know this about EPS files, I can enlarge this guy as big as I want to and everything's still going to stay crisp and clean unlike a JPEG. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.